The idea here is you use a coffee vacuum storage device that you can get from Amazon for 20 euros. So back we come, Richard. So you can use one of these for a demonstration, or you could have five or six of these and get all the students involved with them, but they are very, very easy to do. Lots of demonstrations. I need to speak much more slowly. Uh, and they're all very, very cheap. So we're going to use the vacuum coffee storage machine, and we're also going to do a few bits and pieces with syringes. So for starters, we take a bunch of marshmallows that we get from the supermarket for one euro. Couldn't be more straightforward. We put the top on. Your job is to tell me when I'm speaking too quickly. And this simply pumps out the air. So away we go. And then finally, when you let all the air back in, what do you expect would happen? Maybe you should put the camera closer so you can see what that is. You can see it. Okay, we're going to go three, two, one. What do we notice about the marshmallows? They're smaller. Why? The air is so thin. The air contains air the air. Some of the air that wasn't there has left, so now they're nice and small. One word we never use in physics is the word suck or sucking. If you are trying to raise, if that's full of water, you take this here and you put a straw in there, you can cause that water to rise up into your mouth. You should be able to explain that as a physics student without ever using the word sucking. You should even be able to use it as a physics student without ever using the word pressure. Because pressure and sucking is a word that doesn't get recognized in physics. Pressure does. But pressure is just a cover term you should be able to explain what's happening. If you really understand what's happening, you shouldn't need to use the word pressure. You explain it in terms of molecular movement. But that's for another day. Let's move that out of here for now. Same thing we can do with a balloon. What's going to happen? Okay. It's going to expand. What would cause this to burst? Yeah. <laughs> Am I here? I need to put a top on it. Yeah. In other words, if Okay, so I'm going to take out some of the air. Ready? Yeah, we just we do it first, and we talk about it. Okay, that's not bad. For starters, if I took this balloon into space, would it burst? Yeah. yeah. If I went into space. Would I burst? No. 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 Feel free to speak out clearly. We need a camera picking all of this up. Would you burst? No. Yeah. Thank no. you, Tiernan. Anybody say no? Yeah. You would imagine that you would burst because you are trying to expand. But what would actually happen is because our skin is a very, very strong, it's got a very strong uh, cohesive force to it. In other words, it's pulling all the molecules and pulling themselves together. It actually turns out that even though you would expand ever so slightly, you probably will not burst the actual skin. But your, your skin can't be that high. It's, it's, even the balloon, I wouldn't even be sure if the balloon would burst. It would certainly expand. Whether it would expand so much that it would burst would depend on how tight and how strong the skin actually is. And apparently the guys who look at this other cells say actually the skin is strong enough to maintain it. I take this out, same thing should happen. In this case, would it revert to its original size or smaller? Smaller. 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 Because the air can get out of the balloon. So it should go back to what it was at the beginning, but not any smaller. So it's slight difference. Okay, so this is impressive. If you were doing this in front of a class, you would get a much more impressive response than what I'm getting from these six years who are too cool to express any emotion whatsoever. <laughs> Let's do something with Shaden Paul. <laughs> Would shaving form work? Yeah. Why? Because it's contains uh, air. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Why am I bothering to do it? Because it's just a little bit more impressive. Here we go. <gasps> Again. Am I speaking too quickly? Yeah. That's not 
bad. I've got one more time. I'm done. You got that? Yeah. Okay, I take the top off. What's going to happen? <coughs> to its original size. Small. It's got a lot of air in it. It's easy for that air to escape. Ooh. Camera didn't pick that up, but three students were actually impressed. Okay, so you get a feel for how small it is, all the way back into there. So the air has gone out of it. Okay, so lots of simple demonstrations you can do with marshmallows and <coughs> coffee vacuum van container for 20 euros. If you don't have that, you can do much the same, not quite as impressive, but for much less money, with a simple syringe. Same idea, you want to create a vacuum. So, we could do it with a balloon, you could stick the balloon in there, you could stick, alternatively, your marshmallows, excuse me, I'm out of breath, this is a little bit too big to fit in, I think. I'm starting to speak quickly. I think this is too big. Oh, no, super, fits in. Uh, these guys you can get from, where we get a big syringe like this? Apparently, anyone who's anything to do with horses, there's something to do with horses. And where? Yeah, any vets. And you get them very cheap, you can buy them mass products. So I think just one or two rooms. Same idea, I want to create a vacuum, cover my finger at the end, and I'm going to pull this guy back. Therefore, there is less air pressure inside. But we should be able to, at a later stage, explain what we mean by air pressure in terms of molecules. Anyway, we're ready to go. This looks a little bit better. Stand it up and bring it to here. So I go three, two, one. You're focusing on that, Richard. You got it? Okay, and all the way back down. One more time. All the way back up here. And once again, if you take it out, the pressure, the decrease in pressure, isn't as effective as it is here, but you do notice the increase. You could do the same with a balloon, you could do the same with your shaving foot. Okay? Lots of simple demonstrations. I will now move on to look at the relationship between pressure and boiling point of a liquid.